What's going on guys? My name is Squidud and welcome to another video. So basically today we're going to be taking a look at the MXL 770 condenser microphone. All right, so as I was saying, the 770 is a condenser microphone that runs on XLR and requires a 48 volt phantom power supply, which if you don't know a lot about microphones and audio, that might not make a lot of sense. But basically all you need to know is what that means is with this microphone, I need an external box that's going to handle all of the audio for this microphone, which I have right here, of course. The audio you're hearing right now is actually through the 770, which is right here. And I think it sounds really good. So why the 770 was a compelling choice for me was because it is so cheap. And when doing research for XLR microphones, a lot of people recommended this because it just sounds super good for its price point. And with a lot of other microphones, you're not going to be getting to stuff that sounds this good unless you double or triple the cost. The reason I wanted to replace my Blue Yeti was for a couple reasons. Number one, despite it being an amazing microphone, I did want to get some more clarity in my voice in the high and low end specifically because I just really like the sound of that in voiceovers. Secondly, because as I progressed my audio setup, I wanted to eventually make the switch to XLR just because it's so much more modular and customizable so you could really change everything to suit your specific needs. Not to say that USB microphones are bad though because I can definitely see situations where that would be a lot better. For example, if you don't know a lot about audio and you don't really want to invest in an expensive setup, this is absolutely going to be a better option because you don't need any other hardware. This is it, just the microphone and your computer and you're good to go. Now you may be wondering how the 770 is supposed to be an upgrade considering it's only $85 compared to the 120 of the Blue Yeti. Now to understand this, we need to talk about how microphones actually worked and I went into this a little bit earlier. So this microphone right now is running off of XLR, which now this being a condenser microphone, it needs some sort of external power, which is called phantom power in the audio world. Not exactly sure why that is, but that's what it's called. Mainly microphones will require two different sources, and each microphone is different. This microphone requires a 48 volt phantom power supply, which is what my interface has. But other microphones, like the old Niwer NW700 that I started this channel off with, require 12 volt phantom power. And it's important to note this when picking out a microphone to make sure it's compatible with your interface because if the voltage is too low, it might not work at all. And if the voltage is too high, it could damage your microphone or interface. So what does all that have to do with the Blue Yeti? Well, with the Blue Yeti, this is a USB condenser microphone, meaning all you need to do is just plug it straight into your computer with the USB port on the bottom. Now, because of this, all of the hardware needs to be included in the microphone. You need the microphone hardware and the entire audio interface hardware all inside this one microphone, which is one of the reasons why it's so big. The Blue Yeti also has a headphone port on the bottom, so you need a headphone amplifier or DAC in there as well. Now, because this needs all that, they had to work with a fairly small budget to get all this stuff included and also make it a decent sounding microphone, which they did really well. But with XLR condenser microphones like the 770 here, they're able to make it sound better with a lower cost because they don't have to include all that hardware in it. So when you're using XLR microphones, it really is a lot more modular because if I wanted to upgrade my audio interface to something that had more ports or something that processed audio better, I could and I don't have to replace my microphone. But that being said, if you don't know a lot about audio and you don't want to have to buy all this fancy gear, I wouldn't recommend using an XLR microphone since you're going to have to. And that's why the things like the Blue Yeti exist, is to cater to folks that don't necessarily need to get into pro audio, but they just want to create content that has good sounding microphones. So before this, I record an unboxing segment so you can see the experience of opening up this microphone for the first time. And of course that segment wasn't recorded with the 770 itself, but it was recorded with a Blue Yeti, so the audio is going to sound a bit different, but here's the unboxing right now. Alright, so here we are at my desk, and here is the MXL 770 uh, in its box. I haven't opened it up yet, and we can see this. And this is one of the cool things, uh, is that this microphone comes with a like really solid uh, plastic carrying case um, but otherwise in the box we just have documentation whatever here's the case and everything should be inside it feels really good especially for just being a bonus kind of thing thrown in the box but let's open up the little locks there and uh, there we go really nice and padded good foam on here um, but we got all the stuff so obviously 
This here is the MXL 770 itself. You can sort of see the actual capsule in there, which is kind of cool. Um, and they have also included this shock mount with some extra elastics. So if they break or you lose them, you can put them on. And this really high quality adapter actually, um, if I get the one that I have, this is the adapter I have been using. Um, it's not very good and it always gets stuck in the microphone. But uh, this one uh, seems to be a lot higher quality, especially since you have this on the end, which you can actually unscrew, unlike this one, which just gets lost inside the microphone. <laughs> so that's uh, it's a good thing to include. And uh, yep, that's all that comes in the box. So it's, it's pretty big. Um, the last condenser mic like this that I had was my old uh, Niewer NW700, which was, I want to say, around the same, like, length, but it was around half the width. But, yeah, you can see there's the capsule. It's a really nice capsule. And this is the, one of the cool things about the microphone is there is uh, some switches on the back. So you can have uh, 0 dB or minus 10 dB if you're recording really loud things like drums. And then you have this roll off here, so just a flat EQ, or you can cut off the low end there, depending on your applications that could or could not be helpful. And of course, you see this is an XLR mic. It'll focus. Okay, yep, you can see it's an XLR mic. And this being a condenser mic, it will require 24 volt phantom power supply which I have in my audio interface. So if you didn't know, if you don't know a lot about microphones and whatnot, this is basically a shock mount. And what this does is this little circle is what you'll slide the microphone through. And if I hold it like this, you can see I can sort of push it through. And that's because all these elastics are holding it in place. And basically what that does is if there's a lot of vibration or movement on the desk from me, like, you know, touching my hand on it or whatever, this will basically, it's like a its like a shock absorber, but for the microphone, so it won't pick up a lot of that vibration and stuff. So it's really cool. And if you have a microphone, I definitely recommend using one of those because they're pretty helpful. So currently the audio you're hearing is coming through the MXL 770, which is right there. And so I have it all hooked up with my audio interface right over there. Uh, it's not quite in shot, but it is there uh, through the XLR cable. So right here, I happen to have my Blue Yeti right here so we're just gonna do a side-by-side -side sound comparison in the best way possible which is to have both mics recording the same thing at the same time so I'll hold up my Yeti so we can hear it and yeah this is the test of both of the microphones at the same time I'll be playing this test twice so that you can hear it through both microphones this is the test of both of the microphones at the same time I'll be playing this test twice so that you can hear it through both microphones. So when you go back and listen, they both do sound really good. Except I feel like with the 770 here, it just has a lot more sparkle and a lot more definition in the low end. So they both have good clarity, but I feel like with the Yeti, you just get a lot of mids. Whereas with the 770 here, you can really hear a lot of the sparkles in my voice, uh, like a lot of the S and T sounds. Uh, even though I do have my retainers in, so I can't see the, uh, say those sounds very well. But you can indeed, uh, indeed hear those sounds a lot better with the 770, I feel. As well as the sort of more bass tones in my voice, I feel like those uh, are a bit more clear as well. And so I feel like there's just a lot more um, separation you can really hear. It has a wider frequency response, you can hear that sort of thing uh, with the 770. So while we're here, I'm just going to flip on the roll-off switch. And you might not hear that much of a difference, but that just basically eliminates a lot of the lower frequencies. Now, I think when I use this microphone, I'm going to tend to have that turned off because I really like to have the low bass sounds of the voice, and I feel like it gives it a lot more definition. But uh, I can tell where a lot of people, especially if you have a higher voice, where that could be useful just to eliminate some background noise and humming type of stuff. So now the EQ is back set to flat. Uh, I would demonstrate the dB switch, but you probably just wouldn't be able to hear me with it or it'd be really quiet. It doesn't really change how the microphone sounds, just makes it a lot quieter so that it can take in a lot of louder sounds without peaking as easily. So that would be useful for if I wanted to record my drum set uh, or just any other loud instrument or something like that. So from the testing I've done so far, the microphone sounds amazing and surpassed all of my expectations. 
except in one field that I feel like the Yeti actually beats it is in terms of its internal pop filter. Now with the blue Yeti, you can see that you can't really see the capsule. It's basically just this mesh and you see that there's black foam on the inside and that basically acts as an internal pop filter. Now if you don't know what a pop filter is, it basically um, eliminates high uh, sounds like P's. So for example, if I were to talk directly into the microphone and say a P sound really loudly, like this, the microphone gets really loud and it peaks out the audio and it doesn't necessarily sound very good. With the Yeti, the internal pop filter is really good so it totally prevents this, but as we saw earlier with the 770 here, you can literally see straight through the microphone. Now this isn't necessarily a bad thing, since in a lot of situations this is just going to get you a lot more clarity where the foam doesn't interfere with the frequency response of the microphone, so it really gives the user a lot more freedom. But for me, I can definitely see myself in the future getting a small pop filter uh, just to eliminate those annoying pop sounds. But of course, it's not necessary, and depending on what you're recording, you might not even need that at all. For example, if you're recording a guitar, you're probably not going to need a pop filter because last time I checked, guitars don't say a P sound. So that's pretty much it for this review of the MXL 770. Overall, an amazing microphone for the price and just an amazing microphone in general, and I'm really glad I bought it. Definitely worth the price. So if you are looking for a beginner microphone, I would definitely recommend picking these up, although they're quite elusive, and when they go in stock, they almost immediately sell out. I didn't know how popular of a microphone this was in the uh, beginner XLR market. So yep, that's going to wrap up this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and uh, I'll see you in the next one with better sound. Peace out.